Hello art friends, Miss Larrabee here with another art lesson for this week. This is a super beautiful one, but I think it's also really fun to do. The supplies that you're going to need for this week are crayons or oil pastels, whichever you have. Different colors of those. You're going to need paper and you're going to need an assortment of flowers. You could pick up some of these. This one came from my garden. It's a chai flower, so this is an herb. Um, this one came from a bush. <laughs> Maybe you can find some wildflowers if you go on a walk. You could also use the flowers that I'm using right now and just work along with me and we'll look at these different shapes together. And you're going to need something to watercolor with later. Um, I'm going to show you a way to use markers and a Q-tip to watercolor with. So don't feel like you have to have watercolors. If you don't, that's totally fine. We'll use some supplies that you have. Also, if you would rather, you can look at this project, watch us do it here, maybe practice on your paper, and you could go outside and do this with chalk on the sidewalk. And I think it would be beautiful. What a neat way to brighten up your neighborhood uh, to draw some of this. So. I want to talk to you just a little bit about some flowers and if I were to say I'm going to show you how to draw a flower, I bet most of you would raise your hand and say, Miss Larrabee, I know how to draw a flower and I know you guys do. I know you know how to draw beautiful flowers, but today I want to talk about what makes each flower unique and how on our paper we make them look different and not the same. So if I were to say, let's draw a flower, you might show me something like this. A center with some petals around the edge maybe even a stem and this is a beautiful flower and some flowers do look like this a center with petals around the edge but this is actually a symbol of a flower it's used to represent what all flowers might look like even though we know just from the little collection of flowers I just show all flowers are very unique and have different shapes so instead of working just with the symbol today, we're going to work on using what we already know about shapes to make our flowers look unique and different. We'll do that with shape and with color today. Oh, got a little color on there. That's okay. All right, so let's start with a first flower. I have my blank sheet of paper. I'm going to choose a color that matches my flower kind of closely. It doesn't have to be perfect. This flower's been uh, out of water for a little while, so starting to curl up on me. This flower has a center that's round and it has these long petals around the edges that are kind of like ovals, very straight ovals. So let's start by drawing with those shapes that we do know. I'm not going to start right in the center of my paper. I have color on my hand too. I'm going to start up here in the top corner. I'm going to draw the center first. We're gonna draw these flowers a little larger than they might be in real life, although I think this one's pretty close to its real self because we wanna fill up our entire paper today. And then I'm gonna draw these long petals. They're kind of pointed on the ends. You notice how I went right up to the edge, even off the edge? I don't, I don't wanna have us drawing on the table. I wanna be careful that we don't um, mess up the workspace that we're on. But if a flower starts to go off the edge of your paper, that is just fine, just stop and then pick it back up on the other side, it looks kind of cool if it looks like they're going off the sides of the paper. So that's fine. Now this flower kind of has a single layer of those petals. All right, let's do something a little different though. Here's our next flower. This is a rose. And I'm gonna choose a pink for this. That's probably the closest color. I'm gonna move over here. I'm gonna start in the center it also has a little center. Oh, I forgot on this one. This guy has a center, these little bitty circles. So I'm gonna add some circles to the center just to symbolize those. Okay, so here we have the center of a rose. And then these petals are kind of rounded. You guys can see that. They're, they almost look like little pumpkins, don't they? I would not have thought that. That's kind of neat. And if you notice, there's many layers. So this flower, it was kind of a single layer. This has many, many layers of petals. And the petals get larger the further back they go on the flower. So I'm going to keep those things in mind as I begin to draw. That's something that makes the rose, this rose, unique. So it goes up kind of like this. 
I'm going to draw these center petals first. They begin to overlap, so it's okay if they're touching each other, they're peeking out from behind each other. Right now that this first layer is done, I'm going to go behind with the second layer and the petals are starting to get bigger and I'm not seeing the whole shape anymore. Now I'm just seeing this outside edge of the shape. So it's kind of a curved line and then it bumps into the one beside it. Curved line. All right, I think I need more layers though. So remember these petals are getting wider as they go back. We're just seeing the edges of them. Already you can tell the difference in the shapes of our two flowers. I think I'm going to add just a few more petals peeking out from behind here. Again, if it goes off the edge of the paper, just stop right there, pick up your crayon again. All right, there's our rose. Let's try this one next. This was from a succulent, so it's mostly green, but this time of the year it has these beautiful flowers that come off. I'm going to use my purple. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Here's purple. I'm going to use a darker purple. So this flower has a single layer of petals. And it doesn't have very many, actually we can count them. It has one, two, three, four, five petals. And the center is even larger. I'm gonna set this down for a second and get my oil pastel ready. Sometimes we have to take the paper off, don't we? That means we've been doing lots of artwork. That's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna take this center. Here's the center, I'm gonna draw it lightly. It's much larger, the center is, than the other flowers we were drawing. And then it's just a few big petals and they kind of have a little bit of this heart shape to them. We practiced that around Valentine's Day, didn't we? If heart shapes are a little challenging, then it's kind of a circle with a dip in the top. One, two, three, four, five. Remember, we're drawing bigger than life, so this is much larger than it is in real life. And then I'm gonna actually pick up my yellow because this has this beautiful yellow center. And then it has kind of a ring around it. And then these little tiny yellow dots. And I think this one's really neat. It has these buds on the side, which are pretty. So let's add a few of these to our picture as well. I'm gonna add them up here. I'm gonna continue to use my purple as I add them. These are kind of, look at this, kind of a triangle shape but instead of having sharp corners, they're rounded. So let's just simply draw some rounded triangles. There's one, draw another one this way, two, we'll put three over there. And then they have a stem connecting them. I like to draw the shape of the petals first and then they come down to a stem. Draw it a little thicker. It's very pretty. And then that stem has a flower on it too. All right. Let's see, what else do we have here? I think this one's very pretty. This actually came off of a bush. And I like these little yellow petals. They're actually kind of come in sets of two. If you can see right here, there's a big side and a small side to each one, and they go down the center of the stem. So most of these are individual flowers on one stem or a few. This is a bunch of little flowers on one stem. So I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna start at the top. At the top, it's these buds that haven't opened yet. So I'm just gonna simply make a few little ovals that are smaller, but then they're gonna come down and they're gonna start being flowers, and these flowers have groups of two petals. So I'm gonna put one rounded petal and then one a little bigger. One rounded petal and one a little bigger. And I'm just drawing what I see in these flowers. One round petal. That keeps going down to the bottom and then they kind of start to turn into leaves. So I'm gonna pick up my green again and just draw my stem going down the center. 
then I'm going to draw these leaves. Look at this. This is so neat. I never realized this before, but it has three leaves on a stem. So it's a stem. One, two, three. Stem. One, two, three. We can do this down the bottom of our paper. And there's that flower. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, this pansy is very pretty. This pansy has, let's count the yellow petals. One, two, three yellow petals and one big purple petal in the background. Let's see, I think I have some space down here for this. I'm gonna use my yellow to draw the yellow petals. One, two, three. These petals are very wide and rounded. And then this purple petal on top is a little bigger. And then see these purple stripes? We're not gonna color our flowers in yet. We're gonna use our watercolor, but I think those are worth adding in. A little center. All right, one last thing I wanna talk about before we move on to coloring. We have these little wildflowers. See how they grow in a bunch? In fact, there's a center and there's a bunch of little flowers around the center, just like in some of our other ones, there was petals around. This actually has whole flowers all the way around the center. This is one time when you're gonna to get to use a white crayon on white paper. And here's why. We're gonna color in these little white flowers and when we go over it with watercolor, you're gonna be able to see the, the crayon. So find a spot and start coloring in some of these little white ones. Compared to the other flowers, these are much smaller. I mean, it's probably not even showing up on our video, but that's okay. I'm going to do this in a few places. So I think it's going to look so neat with a watercolor around it. All right. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my green. I'm going to add a few more leaves in. I'm not going to make up the shape of a leaf. I'm actually going to look here at this rose petal. It is a wide oval, but it has these jagged little edges. So if I were to draw one right here, I might do something like this, and it goes up to a point, and then it comes back down. All the variety in these different flowers is so amazing. What a beautiful thing. Let's see, is there anywhere else I would add petals? I think I'm pretty happy with that. All right, it's time to add color now. So we're going to use, I'm going to be using watercolor, but I also want to show you guys a neat little trick. So if you have watercolor, that's great. Go ahead and get it out. You can wake your colors up. You guys remember how to do that by adding, oh, sorry, I'm going to add a, bring my water over, by adding a drop of water to each color. You can wake your colors up, get them ready for painting. But also, if you don't have watercolors, or you don't have the color you want, because this happened to me earlier today, I didn't have the color I wanted, you can use markers. Let me show you. You can grab, um, this is just aluminum foil, like you might use in the kitchen to wrap up some food. You can color over the top of the aluminum foil with your marker, and then use your paintbrush and water, or you could use a Q-tip if you don't have a paintbrush at home. And you pick it up with that, and you can watercolor in just like real watercolor. I mean, it is real watercolor. We're just taking it from marker form, and we're adding it back so that we can brush it on. That is so cool. I did not have a pink. I just had a red. And so I think that this works out so neat. Sometimes if there's a color, maybe you have it in marker, but you don't have it in watercolor. Here's a little tip. All right, so we're gonna color our flowers in. This is called oil resist when you put watercolor over this oil um, that's in the crayon and the pastels and it won't stick to it, which is kind of cool. Could get something similar with colored pencils, but it doesn't have as much oil in them, so it doesn't work quite the same. Notice how I carefully colored in my flower realistically with the colors that it was. But let's look at this rose. Is it just one shade of pink? Not really. It has some lighter white spots. It has some yellow in the center. So I wanna do the same because we're using realistic colors. 
I'm going to take a tiny bit of yellow and add it to my center. And then I'm going to take a tiny bit of yellow and add it to the bottom of my leaves because that's how it is on the flower. It's just at the base of the leaves. You can blend it in a little. You might see a little peeking out back here. I could also go back with my red watercolor, but with a lot of water. Think about where you see the darkest color of pink. It's kind of towards the base as well. So you could go back in and could add just, ooh, not enough water. You could add just a little bit of red in here, kind of give it that darker pink look. Because the flower has variation, you can add variation to your watercolor as well. I'm doing it purposefully. I'm not being messy about it, but I don't have to be exact. And it doesn't have to take a long time either. I'm just going around the base of my flowers, each of my petals. If you feel like somewhere it gets a little too dark, like this is kind of getting more red than it is pink, add, just colored my flower for real. Add a little more water to it, blend it out a little. It's a great thing about watercolor. So versatile, it doesn't have to stay that one color. All right, so I've added my different tones of pink to my flower. Let's try the same with the orange. Let me go back and get this orange flower. It's mostly orange, but if you look down in the center, it also has that yellow, doesn't it? So I'm gonna carefully paint my petals. Well, it's not very carefully, was it? I swear we got a little messy there. No need to rush. As I paint all of these in, I'm gonna start thinking about what other color I also see on these. I also see some yellow. And again, the yellow goes down to the bases of these flowers, so I can just paint right over the top. Add a different color. Remember to rinse your brush in between, so I, my water's off to the side here and I'm rinsing it. And then I would do the same as I go down. Oh, let's do this pansy next. So watch this when I add. Oh, let me grab the pansy too so I can see it. That's not it. There we go. When I add the yellow right over the top, and you can still see those purple lines through, which is so neat. And I like that it has this dark purple behind. Ooh, look how dark that color turned out. It looks so neat up against the yellow. This really creates contrast. Something light against something dark is very interesting to the viewer's eye when they look at your artwork. So this pansy has just a little bit of purple around its edges. So I'm taking mostly water with just a little bit of my paint on it. And I'm adding some purple around the edges, just like how the flower is in real life. This is very different than that symbol of a flower that we sometimes draw, isn't it? This is very realistic. All right, I think you guys get the idea. I wanna show you one more thing. You would color or paint in the rest of your flowers, but let's take a look at the background. Here's what I did for mine. And you have some choices of how you want to do it. But that whole idea of contrast, like I just talked about with the yellow and the purple, you want to think about that as you paint your background too. So here I used, I had this light yellow flower, and I could have put orange behind it, or if I put yellow behind it, it would have just all blended in together. But I chose a color that was very different, that was darker, and it really makes that pop. Look around this purple flower that I have here. You could put blue up against it, the yellow looks really bright against it, right? So I kind of painted my blue and then let it fade into green for the background and fade into yellow. You can do the same. The background doesn't have to be one color. Let me show you what happened. So right here is where we had that white flower. Look what happens when you put watercolor over it. Oh, that is so cool to watch it appear. You drew that too. You can go carefully around your flower and your leaf. And now those white flowers are showing up too. Oil resist is so much fun. That's a neat little thing you get to do with it. How often do we get to use Mr. White Crayon, right? He doesn't get used as much. I think from the 
our book, The Day the Crayons Quit. He would be very pleased at how we used him in this picture. So then you would go in and you would color the rest of your background. All right, you guys got it. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Remember, we're drawing big. Remember that our flowers aren't just one shade of pink, but they might have several shades and even some yellow in them. It might surprise you. Remember, we want to be as realistic as we can, so we're actually looking at the flower to tell us how we might want to do it. Here's another one where I've colored in the stems or painted in the stems in the yellow. This purple, I used dark purple here, and then I just used water as I went out to the edges, and I added a little pink to the corners because that's how the flower is in real life. I can't wait to see what beautiful flowers you draw and watercolor with as well. Have fun with it. This is a project that really doesn't have to take a very long time, but it is a project that you can slow down and enjoy. I'm also going to send some pictures with this video that show how you might want to do this outside with chalk. So if you've practiced inside, but you really would love to fill your driveway or your sidewalk with some beautiful flowers for your neighborhood, um, I'm going to show you some pictures of what we've done. The same idea, we're using the shapes of the flowers to make them look unique and different, and we're using colors to do the same, but we don't have to color it all in on the sidewalk, right? That would be a lot to color in, but you still get the same effect. All right, I hope you guys have a great time. Remember, you can share your pictures with your teacher, um, or you can email them to me. You don't have to. It's just fun to get to see them. I can't wait to see your artwork. I hope you have a wonderful week.